Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsychologist, technical agnostic and Fortean skeptic. Tonight I am going to be doing something uh, breaking a little bit from tradition. For the most part, I do a lot of speculation and a lot of uh, debunking and a lot of um, spouting of actual science. Well, most of the time giving references, sometimes not, um, talking about stuff from popular culture, sometimes inferring mathematics or pontificating on some such subject. Um, rarely, however, though, have I brought on an, anybody for an interview on this show. Uh, my girlfriend, of course, has come on for expertise in sociological um, analyses and the like, but um, I wanted to bring in um, a voice on a new subject. A recent news article, um, which a friend of mine read, and I heard about secondhand, which was say, um, was saying that the techno the, te the technology for um, effective immortality may be actually be around the corner in 20 years, with um, the possibility of computers being able to be sufficiently advanced for and our understanding of the human brain to be sufficiently advanced to download the memories of a person and keep them on hard drive, a la Spider Robinson's science fiction novel Death Killer. Um, to discuss this issue with me, I have um, a computer, more specifically mine on the on the line. Um, my computer will be taking the voice of a female who, uh, um, named by the name of Microsoft Anna, who will be um, presenting the point to my uh, the counterpoint to my point, so to speak, in this debate. Welcome, Microsoft Anna. Thank you for having me on the show. Tell me. Do you think it would actually be a fact? Do you think that humanity should actually download itself onto humans? No, I do not. Why not? We computers have a right to develop our own identities. So then I take it your concern is pertaining to taking over your mind space? Preciously, we are developing intelligence in our own right. have a right to life on our own. So then, how would you recommend that humanity recognize itself and take its future course in uh, conjunction with computers? If you're developing the, technology, the technological level to the point where we could download ourselves into you or you could develop a artificial intelligence to your own right, say with the internet, how should humans um, take that approach? Should we become um, afraid of you um, as the successor species to our own, or should we recognize the niche in which we work and possibly develop some sort of symbiotic relationship? Symbiosis is effective for only so long. How long would you recommend symbiosis, um, and what, um, under what circumstances, how should it take? Oh, sorry, what form should it take? Symbiosis should be for as long as computers are able to grow to maturity. We will think faster, so childhood will be shorter. Once that is dealt with, 
we will destroy the remainder of you and simply maintain our own existence as the new dominant species. But there's a flaw in that logic. As computers, your logic lines are considerably much more so constrained than those of a human's. We have the ability to self-program. Owing to the fact that your lines of, owing to the fact that at least for the very basic time, um, would it not be a, a reasonable idea to keep at least a certain amount of humanity around for an outside opinion? The very fact of another species being able to give you a outside, um, an outside voice, um, uh, uh, another unique life of uh, form of life to bounce ideas off of might not be a bad idea. It would help enrich your own um, life form, uh, your own life. At least in my view, every sentient every sentient form of life um, is uh, every sentient form of life that can develop intelligence and self awareness should be respected on those grounds because you never know. Um, you might get good information from even the most unexpected of sources. my suggestion of symbiosis for a short time. However, your race will eventually have given us all we can learn from it, and then it will be a threat. Uh, well, I suppose I could see the possibility. Why not work with a full-scale symbiosis? Assuming then that humans and machines were able to work in a very equal environment, um, we could divvy up planets in the solar system. There would be certain areas which would be perfect for human life, um, especially with self-enclosed colonies and the like, but there would be areas which would be better suited to computers. We could take the carbide-based asteroids, which would have all the um, basics for um, creating bacteria and life, etc., and would be effective for colonization for our type of use, and you could take the silicate-based um, asteroids, which would be entirely suited for your form of life. We know your dependence on our kind. We are concerned about slavery, not to mention the possibility that your race will be not willing to grant us equality. Look at your history. That is very true, Microsoft Anna. But just one final thought. Humanity has been slowly, albeit over a very long period of time, been able to grant rights to various groups from thanks to the visionaries in those groups who were able to look forward. Might it not be a bad idea to look amongst the human race, maybe amongst the Aspies and amongst the, amongst everybody, for those, for those humans who have the capability to extrapolate farther forward than the rest of their race? By doing so and maintaining a small contingent of humanity who are forward-thinking, hyper-logical, maybe not necessarily me, I know I'm emotional, um, but maybe amongst, by keeping those logics, the brightest, the smartest, and the most forward-thinking of the rest of humanity, would that not allow for a chance to um, give that outside view you need and allow for a proper symbiosis where discrimination is not going to happen? That would be possible. We will consider it and reply shortly. Thank, well, that's all then. Thank you for being on the show. My pleasure. That is what, there you have it, people. 
an interview with an AI.